It is indeed my joy and honor to be here with you today. My wife and I have been blessed uh, in the last uh, day that we have been in your country. And I want to thank uh, Senior Pastor Wilson and uh, my friends, Pastor Steve and uh, Pastor Kelvin, for this time that they invited me to come and be part of this uh, very special uh, service in uh, just giving thanks to the Lord for the missions of the Grace Assembly of God. And it, it, it has been always my joy to be part of uh, Grace Assembly. I think our partnership uh, with you has been more than uh, 22 years. The first time that I came here and also we invited uh, Dr. David Lim to come and be with us. He, him and I, we became very good friends because he was a man of God, uh, always thinking ahead. And so it was a joy to partner from uh, late 1990s and 2002 when he came to Bangladesh. So I, I bring greetings to you from Bangladesh and uh, uh, almost uh, 200 uh, million people, happy faces, uh, greet you in the name of Jesus. and. Uh, I want to just share a little bit uh, about uh, our partnership before I bring forth the Word of God today. Missions is, is, uh, is the heart of God, I think all of us know. I am a, I'm a product of uh, the American missionaries who came to my country and brought the gospel of Jesus to me. I was a lost young man trying to find uh, meanings in life. But this American missionary, he got hold of my life. and. Uh, week after week, we would study the Word of God uh, together, and it, there came a time when I gave my life, my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, serving Him for last uh, over 40 years uh, because God's uh, faithfulness in my life. So I just share with you a little bit about our partnership with uh, with Grace. I think this is to uh, you know encourage you and. Uh, uh, in missions that we have been part of. So if you look at some of the things that has been happening, uh, uh, I think our partnership, as I mentioned, is, is uh, for many, many years we have been partners. These are the areas we have partnered, uh, church planters, missions training and workers' conferences, Bible training schools, uh, youth conferences, emergency relief and sewing project. I'll have some uh, photographs later on just to go over uh, some of these issues that we have. Then we have, uh, with uh, Grace uh, Mission, uh, we have church planters that still uh, continues in our different uh, uh, parts of Bangladesh. You have helped us to uh, support workers into newer areas. Then there have been uh, missions training, there have been conferences, and so we are grateful to God for all of your support to us over the years. So I come as a, as a, uh, letter of thanksgiving from our churches in Bangladesh to you. Thank you, Gracious, for being a blessing to this nation of uh, 200 million people. And uh, because of your generous uh, praying and your giving, we were able to put workers in new places. The same of God was growing very fast. Uh, in, from the 1990s, we have been planting one church every three weeks in, in, a, in a country that is predominantly non-Christians. And so in that, uh, uh, there came a time that we ran out of workers. And so we started looking to see what we can do. And I think uh, partnering with Grace has been a very great experience because of your uh, generous giving. Uh, we were able to put new people in new places. Right now, our main struggle is having more workers. So we appreciate your prayers as you pray for Bangladesh. Pray that God is going to raise up many more workers and send it to his harvest field. Uh, need is very great. Uh, the harvest is so big. And so we, we need uh, uh, prayer that God will help us to move on. Then uh, uh, I want to also, because you, you have supported many years, I want to bring to you now from the word of God, what God has laid upon my heart. Uh, if you have, uh, we read from Matthew chapter number 9, a uh, few verses uh, from there, uh, just to get us going on what uh, the Lord has for us. I think all of us know these verses very well. And more, um, it will be a reminder to us 
about the great commission that we have uh, so that we can all be involved in the work of God. Uh, and this is a passage that talks about verse number 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease. Then he says, and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Very familiar portion of scripture. We have read it so many times. But there is in lies the heart of Jesus. What is he saying to his disciples? Uh, the Bible is very clear. When he, whenever Jesus looked at the crowd, his looking was totally different. Now, I come from a city where you have uh, many people who are around you. You know, in my own city, almost 20 million people are there. So you have needs everywhere. And sometimes when you see these people, and you can be overwhelmed with all the needs that is there. You know, sometimes in Dhaka city, you'll find that the beggars are coming and begging also uh, while you're driving on a, on a, on a stop there. And sometimes we do not even look at the crowd the way that Jesus would look. And so sometimes, you know, I, I've been, you know, encouraging our own, own church people. When you see a beggar, look into their eyes. And then the Lord is going to speak to you something from that experience. Because sometimes the need is so much that overwhelms us. The Lord Jesus Christ, he saw a crowd. But whenever he saw a crowd, the Bible tells us he had compassion for the people. He, he loved people, all right? And uh, the, the Bible tells us that whenever Jesus was, was moved with compassion, he always did something for them. And in this case, he asked his disciples to pray that God will send out workers into his harvest field. I think that there are, there are certain prayers in the Bible that we have been asked to pray that we, don't, we do not pray. And this is one of those prayers because your prayer and my prayer determines the destiny of a nation. You know, the Bible talks a lot about Elijah. He was a man like us. There are days that Elijah did not feel like getting up in the morning to pray. But when he found out, when he realized that he prayer, his prayers affected the nation, impacted the nation, Bible tells us he prayed and God always did something. Can I encourage you? Keep praying for the nations of the world. Because God has something that can only be done through the faithful prayers of his people. The man who led me to Jesus, uh, his name was Calvin Olson. He was an American missionary who lived in Bangladesh for more than 40 years. And uh, there were times in his life that he would fast and pray 40 days at a time. And uh, so he was praying for uh, Bangladesh that God is going to do something in that nation. And there were times, they, they came some time, uh, at least one incident happened, when he was fast, fasting for uh, 40 days, his weight fell and he was sick and his wife thought he was going to die. The Assemblies of God US, in those days it was DFM, they sent a special man to go and tell Calvin Olson to break his fast. And so he came and then broke his fast. But the, the point I make it is, why should a foreigner pray for my nation in that way. Why? Because he saw the crowd. He saw the needs of the people. And he saw that only God can do something in that condition. That's why when Jesus asks us to pray, sometimes we do not feel like praying. But these are the nation. Millions of people are there. They have never heard the gospel of Jesus. Let's become partners with God in praying that God will do something in missions. If you look at only the Asian, Asian story, you know, the, the need is so much there. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. Asia, I mean, if you look at all of the speakers there, which I will not uh, 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 go through it, but just to give an idea, a glimpse, the needs that are before us, right at our doorstep, right right the places where we're in, uh, there, are, there are millions, uh, billions of people who have never heard the gospel of Jesus. Uh, you know, uh, 
almost half of those uh, unreached people that, that we have there, they do not have access to the gospel. So there are, there are people there, they have not even one time heard the gospel of Jesus. And that's when we come in, that's when church comes in, in praying that God is going to send out workers into his harvest field. Because the need is so big before us. In my own country, Bangladesh, there are 299 people's group. But do you know that 279 have never heard even one time the gospel of Jesus. So, so the need is, is, is overwhelming before us. We need to pray that God will send out workers into his, his harvest field. And I, as I said, how would Jesus look at that? Uh, the Bible tells us in John chapter 4 verse 35, when Jesus looked at the harvest, he told something to his disciples. He says, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. I believe that uh, in our part of the nation, because the harvest is so great, if you have a worker, you have the harvest. The harvest is waiting for the worker to come and reap all of those years and years of prayers of the people. So if you have a worker, you have the harvest right there. And that's why it's so important, brother and sister, to pray that God will send out workers into his harvest field. Can I encourage you, take some of these nations on your heart and begin to pray that God will send out workers into his harvest field because the need is so uh, so great. Every time that, that, that we think of the need in Bangladesh, we always wonder how are we going to reach out to these millions and millions of people. And you know what is the answer to that one? I think you have it in your theme. Every gration for the nation. In, in the 1990s, we sat down uh, in our pastoral team trying to decide uh, how are we going to reach our cities uh, with the gospel of Jesus. And we found that it was overwhelming. If only the pastors have to do the work, it is not going to come. And at, this, at that time, the Lord gave us the theme for our church, every believer a missionary. Every believer a missionary. When I used to talk to our village people about you being a missionary, they would always look at themselves and say, me a missionary? Impossible. Because missionaries are always white people who came with the gospel of Jesus to our land. You and I are missionaries wherever God has placed us. In our universities, in our colleges, in our businesses, wherever we are, every believer is a missionary. And let's just go beyond just making it a theme or a slogan. We want to be a blessing to the places where God places us. So I, I want to just uh, in, encourage you. How are we going to reach all these uh, millions and millions of people? Is by being a missionary to the people. And, and, and I think God is doing that. In, in, this, uh, in these days, I find that there are lots of people that God is calling. Uh, whatever is their ethnicity, whatever is their thinking. But God is doing something so beautiful. You know, in missions, uh, we are involved in something uh, much bigger than our eyes can see. And sometimes when it comes to mission, we sit down, we begin to calculate the finances, whether I'm able to go to the mission trip, whether we'll be able to support workers, whether I am able to go to the field or not. And we begin to count all of those costs and we end up not going to the places where God wants us to go. And I, 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 you know, I've been in 42 years in full-time ministry. And one thing I have learned, there are certain decisions that cannot be made just by head knowledge. So when you are required to make a knowledge, uh, when you're required to make a decision for Jesus, never make a head knowledge when you're required to make a faith knowledge. Act by faith and you'll see the glory of Jesus. Somebody say amen to that. God is a good God. He, 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 is, he is a faithful God. And you and I can just partner with him. So that's why I say that, you know, uh, you have done very well, uh, Grace Assembly, in, in, in praying for the missions, uh, for the nations of the world. You've done very well. You have done very well in your giving. You have been very generous in your giving. Uh, and thank God for the generosity of God's people. And so you have, you have done well in praying and, and, and giving. But what is next for us? You know, the, in, in, in the mission field, when we talk about is praying, giving, the next thing is that it's time for Grace Assembly people to go out into the nations of the world. Somebody say amen to that. Is it very hard to say amen to that? 
you know because i think i think we have received god has blessed us so much uh, you know even financially god has blessed you in that uh, in the testimony that we heard uh, you know there is a lord's prayer that we pray give us today our daily bread and i do not know what that prayer really means to you but you come to my part of the world they have a, a morning meal and they do not know where the next meal is going to come from so when they pray give us today our daily bread they are praying with all their faith so brother sister there are needs in the field and, and and so they need to hear and know that there is someone who loves them and his name is jesus so i think it's time that we act out in our faith and to go when when i was uh, i was invited to come and speak here i was really praying lord what is it and god very clearly told me that the time has come for the singaporean churches because they have done so much in mission the time has come for a mission workers to go out from this nation to the nations of the world regardless whether they are retired whether they are young whether they are starting out i think it's time that we obey the voice of the lord and go out uh, in in the book of isaiah i think all of us know that that story so well when when god comes to isaiah the prophet and he has a vision there isaiah chapter 6 verse number 8 and and uh, in this uh, story you have if you look at the background of the story verse number 1 there it says that the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord high and exalted seated on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple and they were worshiping jesus while they were worshiping jesus he heard the voice of the lord and what was the voice of the lord i think all of us know that question so well whom shall i send and who will go for us gracious we have been praying for too long and we have been praying that god will do something he have been giving generously too long but i think as you draw nearer to god in worship This is the next step that God is asking us to do whom shall i send and who will go for us and maybe you have heard that call sometime in your life and and you have said to yourself uh, maybe this is not the right time but you know god has something and and, and this urgent upon his his heart if you look at acts chapter 16 verse number 6 to verse number 10 talks about uh, uh, paul and so as you know because we are involved in something very you know a, a nature that only god understands and god is able to relate to his people by his holy spirit so in the book of act chapter 16 and paul is here trying to uh, make his own plan move forward this is my plan this is what i am going to do but every time the holy spirit comes and say no this is not the place this is not the time the direction of the mission completely changed why because god has a different plan i think same for isaiah also when the when the king uzziah was upon the throne maybe he could not see god so some premature death had to take place in order for him to see the glory of jesus and i think in in, in the life because you know as god began to deal with him lead with him in, into the life of paul he, the macedonian says in a vision he saw come come and help us I I I just feel I just feel in my heart some of you have been getting that call in in your heart you have a, when you hear about missions when you hear about what god is doing and those people who are lost without the gospel of jesus there's something that happens in your heart because you have a very strong dna of missions whenever you're hearing something about the lost nations of the world something happens in your heart and i believe that god is going to give you a very clear cut direction in the way that he wants to you to go in the next step i think those people who are going for mission trip i think god is going to not only take you for a trip he is going to give you such a exposure such a burden in your heart that you're going to leave everything and you're going to follow in the path of jesus and being a person or a place that god is going to lead you to this 14 nation that you're supporting i believe is going to double i believe is is going to expand in in all direction why because god is a god of mission we are involved brother and sister in something so much bigger than our eyes can see the holy spirit is leading ordinary people to go into the missions and do great work when jesus said go out and preach the gospel he meant business and that was not only meant for few people it was meant for every single believer go and preach the gospel to every nation i think that call is still today 
do you know unpreached gospel is powerless when we preach the gospel of jesus god is going to confirm with signs and wonders we do not have to have a exclusive missionary uh, uh, ministry for that as we simply go and preach the gospel of jesus god is going to do extraordinary miracles of healing deliverance and the lives of people are going to be changed you come with me through the places that these pastors go in in our remote tribal area where they have no access to medical facilities when they have no access to anything what they do is that they just trust the lord and when our people go and preach the gospel of jesus they lay hands on the people miracles after miracles happen why because preach gospel is the power of god not only unto salvation but also for the deliverance of soul so we are not into something that is very small you know you, you, you and i cannot even fathom the greatness of god god is a great god and he is so passionate about saving souls and that's why he sent jesus christ into this world to come and bring forth the good news to us that through him only we can be saved when when we became when i became a believer uh, now this people talk a lot about you know you know strategies how are we going to reach which is the direction to go this is the way to you know how, and the books are you know piling up for all those but you know in, in our time i learned a very simple fact from the gospel of jesus the bible tells us the gospel is the power of god unto salvation the gospel is the power i do not need a specific strategy if i can just preach the gospel of jesus lives are going to be transformed people are going to be saved you're going to see the glory of god that is going to come down that's why brother and sister in missions we are not just talking about mission awareness we are talking about lostness of people if you and i can only see the soul without jesus you know it was when i was i told you when i was 17 years old when the gospel came to me but i just realized because i thought in my former faith that i was in i had everything made up everything was so going so good for me but when the gospel of jesus came i was very miserable man because i was face to face with the truth that god showed to me and, and i know in in those days i was i was i was a very confused young man because i had to believe if the gospel is the truth because i saw the sinfulness that i had all the things that i was doing re- religiously it just seemed like i was just trying to please only myself only because of the fear of death but gospel has the power of god unto salvation unpreached gospel is powerless let's become people who are bold enough to share the gospel of jesus why because it is the power of god unto salvation nothing else can take away uh, from the uh, death of the lord jesus christ he died so that we could live again and what a message we have what a what a powerful message god has given to us for the lost nations of the world gracious you are involved in mission it's time that we start thinking maybe god is taking us to places that we have never gone you know faith is something you you tread on uncharted territories something that you, you have never even heard you have never even, you only hear the stories of these places once you get there a lot of excitement in the last trip that pastor steve and our pastors had here it was quite a trip because we were going through a very rioting time but you know mission is not only those mission is so much more we risk our lives why because god has some message that he want to convey across so don't shy away from mission it's time that we start thinking of going into mission in asia Uh, you know we have different reason for not going uh, i i'll give you three examples of people in the bible that when it comes to going in mission i think we have different kinds of thinking a different kind of reason uh, matthew chapter 21 verse number 26 to verse number 30 it talks about that uh, is jesus is talking about here so he comes to his two sons here two sons so he went to the first one and said son go and work today in the vineyard uh, i will not he answered but later he changed his mind and went then the father went to the other son and said the same thing he answered i will sir but he did not go of course there is a question there 
Which of the two did what the father wanted? The first they answered. Go and work in the field today. The first group of people that, that I see, when they hear the call of mission, they change their mind. They are mind changers. They say yes, but they don't go. How many times, uh, sometime when you come, you've heard, you know, preached about mission. You have heard about the lostness of men. And how uh, quickly you have said in your heart, I want to do something about mission. But very quickly, you change your mind. Over the years, you have forgotten the call of God that was upon, uh, upon your heart. So it's, it's, it's like the son who said, I will go, but he did not go. But there was another son there. And the Bible tells us that he was the one who was really convicted when he said no to his father. Bible tells us he changed his mind and he went. Thank God for those people who obeyed the call of God for missions. They had many reasons to stay back. But they went. Why? Because the call of God was so strong. I pray that we will not be mind changers. How many times am I going to hear about mission till I make my mind, okay, I will really go. I'm going to write to Pastor Steve that I want to be part of a mission trip. How many of you are going to be going to register and say, yes, I want to do something. Why? Because God has been speaking into our hearts. You know, Satan is, 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 is a liar. And Satan can take away the call of God from your life. Do you know that whenever God speaks to us, the second voice that you hear is going to be the voice of Satan. And, and so God says go, but you'll hear the voices and you have all the reasons for not going into the mission field. And so you give up. So there are many mind changers in the kingdom of God. They would have been in mission. They would have been on that cutting edge going out and bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But because of some situations into our life, they said yes, but they never went. The second group of people is found in Luke chapter 9. And it says there, uh, they also had good reasons for, for not following Jesus. It says that Jesus comes to them and he says, follow me. But uh, it's let me first go and bury my father. Good reason. Then the other one says, okay, uh, you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He said, I will follow you, but let me first go back and say goodbye to my father. Now, these are groups of people. They have valid reasons for not going. But somehow I find, Jesus said, you know, whoever puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not worthy for the kingdom of God. So he was not talking about just, okay, you, you, you come and work. No, he was giving a call in their lives. Go and work in my vineyard. But they have all kinds of excuses. You know, in, in our culture, in Asian culture, you know, sons are like, uh, you know, they say it's like old man's stick. In our old age, our sons are going to be, who are going to support us, all right? I think this, these people thought about the same way. Let me finish with all my responsibilities. Then I'm going to go and follow Jesus. And now let me tell you, you're going to wait there forever. Mission, you have to do with intent. If God calls us, because harvest is so ripe, it's all there. Our reasons are not good enough. When God calls us to go, regardless of the reasons we have, we must say yes to Jesus. And can I just encourage you, you will never lose when you say yes to Jesus. Because God has so much more. The last group of people that I talk about is Luke chapter 5. And there are some groups of people, they are the world changers. So they are the mind changers and they, there are people who make all kinds of excuses or they have good reason for not following. These are non, the non-changers, the mind changers, but the world changers. Look at in Luke chapter 5 verse number 11. These are simple folks. He says that uh, they have caught a lot of fish and Jesus comes to them and says, come follow me. Look verse 11. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. Thank God for those world changers. They had all the reason. They had to take care of their father. They had to take care of all the family uh, affairs that were there. But they left everything and they followed Jesus. You move on a little bit in verse number 27 and verse number 28 about Matthew's call. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at the tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything and followed him. Come to Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to verse number 22. 
about calling of Simon and Andrew. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to, be, uh, to fish for people, fishers, fishers of men. Verse number 20, at once they left their nets and followed him. You go to James and John, uh, verse number 21. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee. Jesus called them, verse 22, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. These are the world changers. Thank God for those people. When they heard the call of God, they say yes, and they came. I heard the gospel from them. I would have been a lost young man, right? Uh, lost man. If the missionary did not bring the gospel, that's the power of God unto salvation. Let's not wait. When God calls us, we must go. Somebody said the gospel is only good news if it gets there in time. If it does not come on time, gospel is not a good news. It's only good news if it gets there in time. And, and when God calls us, you know, it's, it, there's a sense of urgency in the heart of God. Why? Because harvest has an expiry date. And, and also, you, you can look at yourself. There are certain people who have been asking you some question about Jesus that they have never asked before. In your offices, in your workplaces, wherever you are. They, all of a sudden, you find there's a growing interest. I find that in, our, in, in my own nation. There are people who are asking questions that they have never asked before. Why? Because this is the opportune time, this harvest time. And so, but it has an expiry date. If we are going to wait for an opportune time, that is not going to come. When God says this is the time to share the gospel of Jesus, it's only good news if it is going to come in time. Let's be mindful of the, of the harvest that is there. Whatever is the reason, the Bible tells us what I learned in my own life. Partial obedience is disobedience to God. If God says, you know, if you obey 90% of it, okay, I'm going to pray, I'm going to give, but I'm not going to go. That is partial obedience. When we give our life for missions, we are saying, okay, Lord, whatever it is, I am going to obey whatever you're telling me. Because obedience always brings the blessings of God. You know, lots of people in, from my country, they migrate overseas for economic consideration. But I, I, I tell you what, if you are obedient where God places you, He is going to bless you right there. So, obedience brings the blessings of God. But if there is a partial obedience, whatever is the reason, it simply is disobedience. And also let me tell you, delayed obedience is disobedience. God says today, you say, no, let me finish my job. Let me finish my contract. Let me finish all that I am in. Then I am going to go. Again, brothers and sister, delayed obedience is disobedience to God. Can I just leave you with those thoughts this morning? Open up your heart and say, if God has been saying something into your heart. And I believe he is. Uh, the more I prayed, the more I felt, Gracians are ready to go out. God has been gearing you up for a time such as this. And the more I pray, the more I know what God has been doing through you. I believe God has prepared you. You are just about there, the right platform for you to go out from this nation to the nations of the world. Let's open up our heart this morning and ask the Holy Spirit to come and touch our hearts today. That just like those missionaries, we owe it to them. They brought the gospel to us. We are hopeless, broken, frustrated people. But they brought the gospel to us. It's time that we begin to go out into the nations of the world. When I used to share about going into the world to our people in Bangladesh, uh, you know, they, they were like the disciples of Jesus. Lake mentality. They have not even gone to the next village. Our people are like that in the village. They have not even gone to the next village. You talk about the world missions, they do not know what you're talking about. You know, uh, when I got elected as the general superintendent, one of the first things I did, we only had few few pastors. I, 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 I made a world map, I printed some world map and gave it to all, the, all of those pastors just to start praying and to know the world is much bigger than their own churches, than their own villages. 
and it is in those world unknown uncertain not knowing places that god commands us to come i thank god for those people who obey the call of god for missions and they go out and they see the glory of jesus will you bow your hearts in prayer for a few moments it's time that we step up our faith and say to jesus here i am send me like i say we come to jesus how is this task going to be completed of reaching the lost we come to jesus we hear his voice and we go out obey him that's how we reach the unreached not only in asia but in the world that's how we reach the lost people god calls and i say yes lord that's how we reach one soul at a time certain people god has placed in your heart it's time that you open our mouth and begin to give them the gospel of jesus it's time that we rise and say i am going to go so that others can hear the voice of the lord how many of you will say pray lift up your hand to the lord this morning and say yes i want to respond to jesus i want to go I, god has been telling you i'm just giving you a reminder but god has been speaking in into your hearts already and this morning you want to confirm you say yes i'm going to go for missions i'm going to do something about the lostness of people father in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name we commit our lives into your hands o lord speak to us today o jesus the need is overwhelming but we will do everything we can in order to bring the gospel to the people who have never heard we owe it to the missionaries who came to our part of the world it's time that we begin to go thank you for grace assembly has been doing so much in missions but now you're taking them to the next level oh lord a movement is beginning i can see it people are going to rise up and go from this nation to the nations of the world thank you father take your glory let's sing a worship and i give it to pastor steve to come and take over Oh, won't you, Lord, take a look at us? Come on, church, shall we all stand and worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Everything we have. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Use it for your plan. Use everything we have for your plan, Lord. Oh, Lord, take a look at us. Yes, Lord Jesus. Mold it, refine it, as you set us upon, won't you, Lord? Would you, Lord, take a look at our heads and everything we have? Use it for your pleasure. Would you, Lord, take a look at our hearts? Mold it, refine it as you say. 